G'day Legends, in this video we're going to be talking about why the lightweight division is no longer the most dangerous division in the UFC. Now I know if you've been around this channel for a while, you've heard me praise the lightweight division over and over again. But if you don't remember too long ago, I made a video talking about the death of the old guard of lightweight. And if there is to be a death of the old guard of lightweight, that sort of means that the killer abilities in the lightweight division are no longer there. So if the lightweight division is no longer the king, is no longer the pinnacle of combat sports. And what I mean by that is, the UFC is meant to be the gold standard of all of MMA. MMA is meant to be mixing all of the martial arts, the Muay Thai, the boxing, the kickboxing, the sambo wrestling, everything. If the UFC stands on top of the sport that stands on top of all the other combat sports, then one of those divisions surely must be the hardest competition in all of combat sports. It used to be lightweight. It no longer is lightweight. So that means we need to reshuffle what I like to call the combat sports pyramid of greatness. It, this is it. it. This, this, this is it. This is the combat sports pyramid of greatness. <laughs> Uh, look, look, if you've been around the channel for a minute, you might be wondering, Dougie, isn't this something that would be better to do on a live tier list? No. No, it wouldn't. I want to do it myself. And then maybe later we'll bring it up on a live on a live stream and we can shuffle things around. But I'm going to have a go at this one myself. All right? Without Mr. Toad getting in the way. Without Cage telling me I'm wrong all the time. And without Mo endlessly arguing about Alex Pereira with me. So let's start off with that. Down the bottom of the Pyramid of Greatness, you can clearly see that I've got the men's heavyweight division. Horrible division. It's got four good fighters in it. The rest of the division is absolute trash. Then I've got the men's light heavyweight division down there with heavyweight. It is bad. It's a very, very bad division. Listen, you've got Alex Pereira. Brilliant. One of the best fighters in the world. You've got Yuri Prohaska. A great chin. You've got Magomed Ankalaev, and then that's about it. The list really does take a fairly big nosedive after that. I'll give you Alexander Rakic. He's an amazing kickboxer. And then also Jan Blakowicz. But who knows how Jan is going to look when he comes back? Who knows how he's going to look when he comes back? Listen, this is the reason the light heavyweight division has to go to at the bottom of the pyramid. Not too long ago, we were talking about Anthony Smith getting another title shot. We can't be having that. We can't be having that. So down there, there you go. Then, of course, you've got the uh, women's bantamweight division and, of course, the women's strawweight division. However, you'll notice that the women's flyweight division is on the second bottom level of the pyramid. I do think the women's flyweight division is deeper and, quite frankly, a harsher level of competition than the men's heavyweight division. So I've put them there. And then, of course, you have got men's middleweight. Now, again, the top of the middleweight division, it is quite good. This is the thing. When you look at that top five, it does always seem like each division has its strong points. But then what we're looking for here when we're looking at the pyramid of greatness in the UFC is some depth to the division. And previously, like I've been saying, lightweight was at the top of that. But with Gaethje being chinned and Dustin Poirier being chinned, you do notice when you start to look at lightweight, you've really only got two very, very good contenders in the top five. And that is Armin Sarukian and also Mateus Gamrot. And with Mateus Gamrot, I'm not saying this just because I hate the guy's fighting style and I want the lightweight division to be fun, but he sort of fluked his way there. I mean, he blew Fiziev's knee apart just by looking at it. Then you have a look at the rest of the division. I mean, Dan Hooker is still kicking around. Dan Hooker is one of those guys that should be that quintessential gatekeeper. Benoit Saint-Denis is ranked number 12th, but how good is he really? I mean, he was in one of those fights where they were begging the judges to stop it. You've got Jarlin Turner, who's essentially a weight bully. Rafael Fiziev is an amazing striker, but he is just a striker. Michael Chandler is ranked 6th for some reason, and Benil Dariush is getting on to 50 years old. When you really do start to look at all of the lightweight division, it does start to crumble, so it's got to be flicked off the top of the pyramid. So, lightweight, you're gone. But that does mean 
where do we start to put things? And one of the questions is, is it now the welterweight division that is coming along, right? Is welterweight maybe the new king of the divisions? And why would I say that? Well, you've got Leon Edwards, who is an amazing kickboxer with great counter grappling, which does seem to be the new meta of the game. But whether or not Leon Edwards is going to get through Bilal Muhammad, it does seem like the champion isn't very secure there. It does to me feel like Leon Edwards might win this one, but then it's just going to be an Ian Gary, JDM, or Shavkat Rachmanov. And that is sort of what creates a damn good division you know you have got these red hot up and coming contenders even with the new one that we just got in yeah he's old but michael venom page put on a great striking clinic on our what seven fights in a row win streak ian gary so even some of the older guys that are in there are still putting up a damn good fight however having said that welterweight is one of those divisions where it feels like a lot of the young prospects in that division are just sort of blooding their teeth over at lightweight and are waiting to get too heavy to make the lightweight limit and then they'll transition over to welterweight it just doesn't feel as deep as the other divisions so i don't think the welterweight division can be our new king of divisions it is probably going to go down here in the mix still in that sort of mid-tier zone but i would say right up here at the top of the mid-tier zone of course, if lightweight isn't at the top, then lightweight has got to still be maybe the second best division in the UFC, but maybe just kissing welterweight there. I mean, this is why we're constantly talking about there being a 165 pound belt, because there can be so much fluidity between the two divisions. So could it be the flyweight division? <laughs> Sorry. Could it, could it be the flyweight division is the hardest competition now in the UFC. Super deep, and it does feel like there is a lot of talent available, especially since it has got such a big regional scale. So many people over in Southeast Asia do work in at that flyweight limit so perfectly. But unfortunately for me, flyweight still seems like we're in the position where we're trapped in constant rematches. And I do not think that you can have someone who just came in ranked number 10th, Steve Ursegg, fighting for a title because huh, you were there and you were available and so much inactivity in the rest of the division. So unfortunately, the flyweight division doesn't quite make it as the king of the UFC anymore. So then obviously it is between the featherweight division and of course the bantamweight division. Which division is the deepest and the hardest in all of the UFC at the moment? Bantamweight division. <clears throat> The featherweight division, at the moment, still crowned by Ilya Tapuria, could one day find himself being the pound-for-pound -pound best fighter in the world. Still officially has Max Holloway in it. Also one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Still has Volkanovski in it. Yet another pound-for-pound -pound goat in there in the list. Then, you, of course, you've got Brian Ortega, who just proved his medal against Yair Rodriguez, Movzar Evluev, Arnold Allen, who seems to only lose those big moment fights against him, Max Holloway. And Max Holloway is such a big name. Then you've got Diego Lopez just rising up the ranks, absolutely knocking out everything that he looks at. You've also got Lerone Murphy. I feel like Lerone Murphy is just this silent force, silently taking away names off the list and working his way up to a title shot. Featherweight is clearly one of the hardest divisions in the world at the moment, but then of course you've got the bantamweight division, Sean O'Malley, Marab Divalashvili, Corey Sanhagen, who just refuses to go away. But here is where bantamweight starts to lose a little bit of its edge for me. Henry Cejudo is still up there. Davidson Figueiredo is like, is he going to be around for the long run? He is getting kind of old. Jose Aldo, another old vet that is still in the top of the division. Dominic Cruz is ranked number 13th. You just cannot have that. So while Bantamweight is a really good deep division, I do feel like the murderer's row up in that top 10 just isn't as bad as it is at featherweight. I feel like the featherweight division at the moment has successfully taken the crown of lightweight. Maybe it's because of all the work Max Holloway has done. Maybe he is carrying an entire division, but then of course you've got that Ilya Tafuria, Val Alexander Volkanovsky thing going on at the moment. You've got the Diego Lopez just star power rising up. I do think the featherweight division 
is now the hardest division in all of the UFC. So let me know, what do you think about this pyramid of death that I've constructed that is a ranking of all the UFC divisions? Put it down there in the comments. I'm sure I missed something. So let me know about it. You guys always do. You guys always seem to do that. If you really like this video, go ahead, give it a like. If it's your first time around here on this channel, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. This is one of those things that I am going to visit on a live stream. So if you want to be able to argue with me live in person over something like this, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button. And until then, that is about all of it. So I will see you all in the next video.